Good afternoon. Thank you so much. Um, as you teed up, I'm Angie Kim, President and CEO of the Center for Cultural Innovation. We are a California-based nonprofit. We are a service organization. Our existential purpose in life is to serve artists directly. And we do that three ways. We are a conduit for resources and opportunities to flow directly from private and public funders directly to artists. We also provide professional development. We provide the uh, entrepreneurship training and business uh, skills training for artists to professionalize their careers. And we are also considered to be a keystone part of the overall arts infrastructure. We are a convener, a disseminator of information to policymakers, and we are also a commissioner of primary research on artists and what they need. And it's to that point that I want, uh, uh, am here. Right now, we have a partnership with the National Endowment for the Arts on a national uh, study on what has changed in terms of definitions of artists what's changed in the arts landscape, and the kinds of support artists need today. And the reason why we embarked on this research is that the overall infrastructure of the arts in America is about two generations old. And yet, in just the past few years, quite literally just the past few uh, five years or so, there have been dramatic generational, technological, and demographic changes, and those are keenly felt here in California. So much so that we had to question if our current ways of supporting the arts have kept up. So just to be clear, I, I cannot actually talk about the research because we're still in the research phase of sense making of the data. But personally, what I can tell you is what I've observed from uh, numerous convenings across the country, including here in California, extensive literature review, and uh, uh, in over dozens of interviews um, with key experts. What we are concluding, perhaps, um, uh, without letting too much out of the bag yet, is that we are at an unprecedented moment of valuing and wanting to benefit from creativity in America. This is altogether a tremendously wonderful thing. There is a more expansive appreciation of all those who fit within the term creatives now. That includes a broad spectrum of cultural practice, including studio artists, community-based practitioners, independent designers, and cultural producers. Also, they work across all sectors, and artists always have. They are employed by and thought partners with um, companies in the uh, commercial sector. They are supported by the nonprofit arts, and increasingly, they are in residence in governments to address civic problems. What this means is that we have arrived at an unusually uh, vibrant, inventive, and creative moment, as a number of people today have addressed. And there is a general recognition by the public of the value of creativity, and there is also a growing, tangible market appetite for not, from non-arts sectors for artists' thinking skills and products. This is evidenced by a burgeoning demand for, by those outside the arts. So take, for instance, in the mental health profession or in corporate leadership training in the financial industry, transportation sector, urban planning, justice, and technology who are seeking artists. I want to actually provide you a concrete and powerful example of this shift of attention toward the creative sector that's happening in our own backyards. And it's a very powerful example. I don't know how many of you have had a chance to look at the recently released 2015 annual report of the San Francisco Federal Reserve. This, it, this document describes for their first time how the Federal Reserve is now institutionally backing arts and culture as a legitimate and needed strategy for community development. They arrived at arts and culture after decades of investments in the built environment and finally recognize that it is artists and arts organizations within a community who can authentically anchor long-term change. In other words, the arts are what provide the stickiness for interventions to have a desired and lasting impact. But while the demand for creatives and arts organizations is right now growing, uh, ironically, philanthropic support for the arts is trending the other way in California. Against this backdrop of public interest in creativity and emerging market demands by non-arts industries for our impacts, traditional supporters of the arts are either leaving the arts field altogether to support other issue areas or are restricting their arts support to projects that are for non-arts purposes with the overall effect of reduced funding for arts. The desire to support the arts 
to solve social problems is terrific. And there are many artists and arts organizations where that is their sole purpose. But we need both, arguably. We need to support arts organizations where we can appreciate and enjoy the arts and where artists can develop their practice through commissions and employment. And we need opportunities to train and apply artistic skills and talents to non-arts issues. If we do one without the other, ultimately we will fail to realize the full potential of the arts and artists' productivity to make a difference in these new and emerging ways. On behalf of CCI, we appreciate you, our elected leaders, for increasing California Arts Council's budget. It is a huge deal to have such public support for the arts. But at this moment of such tremendous new opportunities for the arts and their impacts, we need more investments to ensure that our arts and culture and creativity industries thrive, not just barely survive, particularly at this moment. For a state that is considered nationally to be a center of this kind of innovation, creativity, entertainment, and the arts, I would say that we are actually underperforming relative to the talent, cultural diversity, and cultural assets that are in this state. It will take supporting California Arts Council to make grants that support both art and arts social impacts. And to do that, I would say arguably that we really still need to increase public support to a level that is commensurate to our population and these opportunities. It will also take supporting our state's humanities. And I want to point your attention to the California humanities, which does not get a, a penny of our state funds. Um, in order to support our humanities ensures that our narratives about California are democratically constructed to paint rich and textured stories of who we are today and into the future. This is a moment when we need to make sure that we remain a leader in unfettering creative productivity so that we can meet newly emerging demands for their impacts. And I would urge you to to think of this ask not from a needs-based request, but an opportunity-based one. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you also for your, your very interesting work. Um, could you just, uh, just, just kind of give us a, give us a story of investment that that you've worked on to give us a little bit more of an illustration of of how your model works. Um, well, so we support artists, and one of the things that we have su had support from a funder to do is provide equipment grants. Um, we had an artist who received an equipment grant and used it to buy software and hardware. Um, and he is a, uh, a data visualization artist. Um, he takes really interesting information. Well, uh, it should be more interesting to everyone about um, uh, the number of deaths through a war or the, or the number of gallons of oil pumped in a, a, a particular country, et cetera. And he visualizes that in a way that is very compelling to anyone looking at it. The interesting thing about that is he credits that opportunity to be an artist as what led him to then work with another um, person to, uh, to develop a basically a new software company yeah. that has Red Bull as a key client um, for them to do data visualization. So in other words, we hear these stories all the time. If you invest in us as an artist we can take those talents and skills and those have market value. And yet we're facing a moment right now when we want those impacts, but we're actually not interested, uh, not this group, but uh, there's a climate in which we're disinvesting from the arts. Mm -hmm. Where do you get the money to, to these investments? Um, private foundations, okay. public funders, including LA County Arts Commission, San Francisco Arts Commission, et cetera. I actually want to address your question about the Fine Arts Gallery because we've been looking at that as well. Yeah. And for us, that's a key indicator of the disruption that's been happening technologically and generationally. Fine Arts Galleries are part of an overall trend that's also happening in the commercial entertainment sector where there is a uh, less dependence on producers um, or agents, and more on distribution platforms. And so, so interestingly, fine art gallery numbers are going down, but in their place we're seeing an emergence of artists working in collectives where they don't actually take on any kind of corporate status and therefore cutting out the middleman who used to take a cut of their profits. 
And I want to also point to, um, there is a statistic right now that um, about online art sales. So in other words, the distribution platforms, artists are going straight to consumers. And online technology is also one way. In 2013, there was $1.5 million, uh, in, or sorry, billion dollars in online art sales. Mm -hmm. In 2015, just two years later, it almost doubled, $3.27 billion in art sales. But what's really interesting about that is 69% of those art sales are uh, for fifteen thousand um, dollars for less than uh, for artworks less than fifteen thousand dollars. In other words, there's also this kind of democratization that happens outside the fine arts galleries. So we're alarmed by that also because those are also major cultural um, conveners. But we're also finding that there's still a huge demand for artists. Mm. Okay, well that's got some promise. That's uh, that's, that's that's interesting. Okay, well love to if, if you could share some of that data with us. Um, I'd love Our to. report will be out in fall, and oh, I will fantastic. be more than happy to. Well, please put us on the list. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Angie.